Hey guys, Doug B here, your average axe wielding hack. Hey, I am still going through the suggestions that you guys sent me back a while ago. And you know, there are some really good ones, like this one here from Scott Peters. I would like to see some in-depth videos on how to set up the blocks library. Glad you were able to get your Axe FX3 back up and running. I didn't know about the recovery process, but I do back mine up periodically. Well, thanks for the suggestion, Scott. I did do a video on this last year, but I think it's time to update that video. So ready? Let's get into it. First off, what exactly is the block library? The simplest definition would be that the block library is a collection of blocks that you have either created or edited and have stored for later use in other presets. Backing up a bit, we know that you create a preset by grouping any number of various blocks together that allow you to take the input audio signal, you know, usually a guitar signal, and then modify slash process that signal, and then pass it to one or more output jacks to be amplified by an amp and speaker. If you only use factory presets or third-party presets, then at this point you really don't need to know about the block library because you aren't working with the parameters in each block. Nothing wrong with that, my friend, you are good to go. But if you tweak the presets or even build your own presets, then you know that there is a lot of repetition, doing the same thing over and over when you use quick build. You probably have some favorite blocks and you probably have some favorite adjustments you make to those blocks. For example, you might have created the perfect reverb by making several adjustments. If you look at the reverb block, you see that it has 66 different types to choose from, plus five pages of different categories with 56 different parameters. Let's say that to create your perfect reverb, you've had to tweak 17 different parameters, and now, hey, it's perfect, but it's only available in one of your presets. What if you want to use it in other presets? You could keep on using that same process over and over, but it's like reinventing the wheel. If you've already invented the wheel, do you need to invent it again? Of course not. <laughs> Besides the reverb block, there are 40 more different types of blocks that can be used in a preset, and each block can have many other parameters that can be adjusted. That's a whole lot of more <laughs> wheels to reinvent. There has to be a better way to save your favorite blocks for use in other presets. Well, that's where the block library comes into play. Now, for some reason, there is only one mention of the block library in the Axe FX3 owner's manual, and it only says that you must use Axe Edit to access the block library. You can't get to the block library from the front panel. Well, you know, that does make sense because the block library info is stored on your computer. But still, there's nothing else? Well, okay, then how about in the blocks guide? You know, the complete reference for blocks and parameters? There should be a lot of info about it in there, right? Wrong. Not even one mention. I literally couldn't find any mention of the block library in any fractal documentation. Was this something that just got overlooked? I don't know, but it does seem odd that there's hardly any info on it. On the other hand, Fractal might just assume that since it's so dead simple to use, we just really don't need any documentation for it. If I can make a suggestion, it would be to make a manual for Axe Edit. But enough about that for right now, let's move on. Most of the 41 blocks have four channels per block, and you can think of each channel as a storage location. For example, the amp block has four channels. So you can have four different amps stored in your amp block, or you could have four of the same amp, but with different settings. Or you could have a combination like two channels using one amp type with different settings and two other amps in the other channels. If you equate this with the physical world, it would be like having a room marked amp one and inside that room you could have up to four amps connected and ready to go. Next door to that is another room marked amp two and in that room you could have up to another four amps connected and ready to go. The Axe FX3 has 299 different amp channels available, and you can have up to eight of these in a given preset. Now imagine how big of a facility you would have to have in order to house all of this stuff. And keep in mind that we're only talking about one of 41 different block types available. Let's take a look at this factory preset. Number 108, Limelight Matte. Now let's just say that you absolutely love how Matt has set up the drive block. And it's even using all four channels. See, tube drive three knob in A, esoteric RCB in B, FET boost in C, and Timothy mid in D. How can you save this drive block to use later in your own presets? 
If you look underneath type, you'll see a drop down box labeled library. Click on the down arrow and you'll see that there are six different choices here that you can choose from. Now it allows you to save a unique name for the library entry. You can save just the current channel or you can save the entire block. And see, now we have a library entry named Limelight. That block has been written to the computer and it's in the documents folder. If you look in your documents folder, you'll find another folder labeled Fractal Audio. If you look in there, you'll find another folder labeled AxeEdit 3. If you look inside there, you'll see two folders for blocks and presets. The blocks folder is where your block library is stored. And if you look within the blocks folder, you'll see folders for different block types. The block library will save each block type to its own folder, so you don't have to add the block name to the entry that you are saving. For example, if you wanted to save the drive block from the Limelight map preset, you could just name it Limelight, like I did. You don't have to name it Limelight Drives, because the drive block entries are saved to the drive block folder. So you know, when I click here, there it is, Limelight, and then there's my test drive block from a year ago. And when you recall one of the block library entries, it will only show you the entries for the block that you are currently editing. So say for instance, I click here on library, see there's limelight and test drive block. Now to the best of my knowledge, there is no limit as to how many entries you can have in the block library. And then again, by clicking on the down arrow, see you can save, you can save as, you can rename, you can delete, you can refresh the library, and you can show the folder. And you don't have to save the whole block. Like we saw earlier, you can save just the channel you are currently in. So for example, if you wanted to save your perfect reverb, you could click on the down arrow, click save, call it perfect, and just save the current channel. And there it is, perfect. You can then recall it later in a new preset. That should make new preset creation a whole lot easier. So there you have it guys, my take on the block library. Now, hopefully I showed you that it is pretty easy to uh, work with it once you understand how to save and recall your stored blocks. Give it a try, let me know how it works for you. Now, next Wednesday, we are gonna be looking at the new Ownhammer Moabi IRs, and they came with a few presets. Now, you don't wanna miss that. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. All right, guys, we will see you next Wednesday. Have a great weekend.